Hey, what's up everybody? Robert Marzullo here with Ram Studios and I got another video for you. Today I'm going to do a video where I show you how to draw wings. We're going to do uh, an angel wing and also uh, kind of a bat wing or a monster wing, dragon wing, whatever you want to call it. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first, what like I like to do with anything, I kind of start out with a sketch. Um, and then as far as wings, uh, we'll keep it a basic, I guess, extended out uh, pose. And I'll draw kind of my, my lo loose, rough beginning sketch like so. Right, which actually is would come out to a point like this. Maybe. And start shortening down into here. And... Uh, I had a request in the videos uh, comments to do something like this because I always, always kind of ask uh, you know my viewers what would be the good uh, the next good video to do because you know I really don't I don't know you know what people would like to see you know I don't mind drawing anything and everything under the sun so it helps to have that feedback so you know that being said be sure to drop uh, stuff in there and let me know uh, what you'd like to see and what you think of uh, videos of it I've done and where they can get better so um, let me make sure I'm heading in the right direction with this actually I think they come out like this and then they fold over I believe something like that I believe that's right uh, one thing I do know about uh, wings um, is they typically start out with smaller feathers like this and they kinda get uh, longer and more extended uh, as they fan out, like so. Uh, and there's generally a few different sets of patterns in the wings. Uh, so let's say that it gets to about here. And then you got, we'll say, one more longer set here, shifting direction. And then the final kind of uh, fingertips of the wings. Now, that's the other way I kind of look at it. This, this is just an extension of the uh, bird's arm, and this would be at the very end their fingertips. So you kind of look at that uh, in another way to uh, to draw this. Okay, so there's my basic rough sketch of a wing. Um, nothing too elaborate, easy to understand, and easy to uh, take further and, and add more detail to. Now, what I would recommend uh, if you're really trying to get this down and get a good feel for it always remember to break down the uh, the larger more complex things with the smaller individual pieces so in this case that smaller individual piece would be a feather so if you're having trouble with it practice drawing just a feather off to the side you know this is kind of how I do my feathers just real quick you know there's kind of light and dark spots in the feather so you do a little bit more line work here and there the feathers generally are, have an imperfect edge like this and they break off and do like these little lines like this. Sometimes there might be a gap where it's actually been, you know, frayed or whatever. And then you generally have kind of a little bit bulkier line in the middle where the, uh, the vein or the uh, bone of the wing feather is. So you kind of draw that in. And then, you know, you can just kind of go as crazy as you want with the shading and make it look as cool and detailed as you want or as simplistic and basic as you want. So that being said, that's that's one of the feathers there. So when you get inside here, you keep that same idea in mind, but now obviously we're further away from the, the wing, so you don't want to over-detail it. You know, and you could. You, uh, you know, I've seen some guys draw some very detailed wings that looks pretty cool. You know, they probably got carpal tunnel by the end of the drawing and, um, you know, had to sleep for two days after after they stayed up doing all that detail work. But, you know, do as much as you want or, or as little as you want. You know, just see what works. You know, I've seen some uh, pretty simplistic wings that look pretty cool too. So it's, it's not always that you have to gorge yourself on the detail. You can sometimes do more with less. But, you know, just get in there, start detailing it out. Uh, if you want to cheat at this point, you could copy and paste these feathers and probably fly right through this. Um, I usually don't. I usually draw them individually just because I kind of kind of zone out when I'm doing detail work like this and get into it, you know, kind of relaxing, I guess. Um, 
but you know how whatever makes you uh, feel good about the overall end result. Now another thing I like to do on mine, um, and I'm not looking at reference, so I can't tell you if this is real or not. I just for all the little cartoony wings I've drawn, I like doing this little feathered, fluffy edge to the uh, the exterior part, the arm I guess I would call it of the wing, and I just kind of do a lot of these little fuzzies. I don't know. It's always something I've done on the wings I've drawn. I probably picked it up from looking at some comic uh, art somewhere down the road. But I always think it looks cooler on wings to add these little details like this. Alright, so there's that. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rough in a little bit of this, not much. Uh, I just want to cover more of the basics of it. And then I'll time lapse the rest and show you the, the detail work that I'll do. The other thing to keep in mind when doing the wings that make them look uh, kind of neat is to remember the drop shadow of each uh, feather onto the next feather. Uh, and even, you know, if you, if you were doing the shadow in a way where it was, uh, it's hard to explain, in a way where it was on this side of all, all these uh, feathers, then you would treat, treat that drop shadow as one big drop shadow. But I like doing each one down below the one closest and beneath it like that, if you see that. Um, that kind of conveys a cool depth with it and you know what you could do is when it gets further over here maybe extend the drop shadow even further to make it look like this area uh, like the feathers are larger and bulkier so they're giving a bigger drop shadow. Um, just so That's just a real quick thing to remember when doing wings that makes them look kind of neat and it's easy to do. So the breakdown of the feathers, the drop shadow, the overall sketch shape, and no time you'll have a cool, you know, uh, wing. Now the other pose for that the same kind of wing is like this, where the you know the wing is shut uh, or curled around the bird, unicorn, whatever the heck you're drawing, and you know it kind of does one of these numbers, something like that. I think it comes out more like this, and then down, maybe this curls over more. So just play with that shape, but it, it does something like that, you know, and it just it's more of a curled over look or protective look or huddled up look or whatever um, so I just want to show you that too um, just remember a lot of these drawings are basically just pinpointing the shape and then from there you can add your detail work and your shading and all that and get all crazy with it uh, now as far as a bat wing um, you know you got the easily de defined version you know something like this I guess um, a real cartoony version. Uh, I kind of do mine like this where, you know, again, it's really just an emulation of that one over there. This is a little bit different. And then you come down to a point and we'll say four points because, again, it's a hand, so to speak. So you get the, you know, the five fingers. Um, and then I usually, and I keep, you know, I'm not looking at reference, but can't remember if this is right or not, but you know, do your own research. Just like I say in a lot of my videos, I tend to draw more animated styles, so I'm not always looking right at reference. I mean, I could, I could just pull some, but I'm trying to give you just more lesson in the way that I would sketch it right out of my head. So, um, so we'll just do it this way real fast, and I'm sure it's not entirely correct, but I can still get an effect that should look relatively cool. Um, okay, so there would be our, our bat wing or whatever. So now, <clears throat> the thing that I think makes these look cool is to do your shading, sh uh, sh excuse me, shadowing. Um, I tried to combine shadowing and shading. Shadowing. Shenading. Alright, so just kind of sketch in here. And see how just by doing that little bit up top there and rounding it out, and the inner parts of that give it a little bit more, you know, coolness and depth. And then you start adding some, you know, some of your line work like this. Again, I'm trying to just keep this real fast for this part of the video. Because it always gets real lengthy when I start talking. Excuse me for that. I guess I, uh, I must apparently like to talk or something. So like that, 
and then now you can add some cool texturing kind of side to side like this if you want and you can kind of start to build the look that this has got a little bit more roundedness and that it's got a little bit of uh, you know transparent skin going on there because that's that's typically how you want to make these look by the time you're done uh, especially if you're doing like a cool uh, dragon wing or something you know bat wing I mean that's you're gonna see a little bit of transparency the texture of the skin like this you can get into your, your shading a little bit more and lastly uh, well, you'll even want to shade these these uh, bone structures out a little bit here and there there's just some varying line uh, thickness like that and then possibly some uh, real quick vein work because uh, generally you know you got like uh, veins that you can see through into the the members you know the membrane or the, the skin of the the bat wing or whatever it is so you know so by doing that you can you know and remember the coolest way to do veins is just to shade the one side darker than the other it's real easy so if you do you know a vein and it's a Y kind of shape coming through here so you draw this little funky Y then you just kind of picture right, if the lights coming from this way your darker side's gonna be on this side and you, that's about it you know so a lot of guys you can even go back and erase the very top piece as long as there's some cross uh, something that you can kind of cross shade with it and you know you pretty much got some you know some veins like that so something's not right about that oh and then usually up here I'll do like kind of this you know uh, claw and some wrinkles around it I usually do that on all of them actually line weight, claw and wrinkles, you know, just kind of repeat that effect, it's real easy. See, I'm just kind of scribbling it in, I'm not not dedicating a tremendous amount of time, I'm just flying through it just to get the idea down. And then when I go back and I do my other layers, and that's when I can kind of refine it and get it, get it the way I want. Okay, so there's our angel wing, and uh, you know, and two poses. The, the bat wing, um, so to speak, and a feather, uh, just a really basic feather. So what I'll go ahead and do now is uh, speed up this video for you so it's not entirely boring and uh, show you how I might detail these and then uh, maybe stop and say something at the end and you let me know what you think. So let's go ahead and get started on that portion.
Okay, so there it is, everybody. Um, there's kind of, uh, you know, one particular way you could do these uh, drawings. Uh, but, you know, obviously there's uh, variations that I could have used here in each, each aspect of it. So just kind of play around with it, try your own thing, and see what works. Uh, you can even go back, like, uh, uh, I like to add layers and go back to, you know, my finished inks and then go, all right, like, say, these wings right here. You see how I added the shadows under each wing to kind of make it protrude out a little bit more. And I come back with the white ink if I wanted. And we'll just try it out so it looks like it's on a separate layer so it's non-destructive. And I can just kind of highlight the tips of these uh, wings. It may or may not stick. We'll see. Sometimes it uh, sometimes it works. Other times it's like, nah, you know, maybe not. Or that, But that's the beauty of being able to use layers and stuff and just really play around with stuff like this. In traditional inking, this would be where you pull out your... Uh, your white ink and you know probably use a brush tip or something like that and uh and apply it on there and you know it's kind of scary though i mean it looks really cool and you just use it sparingly and you can always you know ink back over it but it's always th thought it was more scary but now with uh digital it's like you know why not i i try this effect on everything now so just gives you that little bit of freedom so yeah and you see all that does it kind of pops those those wings out just a little bit more and uh, you know you want to use that effect one more time uh, kind of sparingly uh, you know you overdo it and it really takes away the effect that you're uh, that you're bringing out with it which is basically just little highlights um, but yeah just little things like that and uh, you know then you can maybe come back over to the uh, the dragon wing and see if uh, maybe some more aggressive shadows would look cool because I don't feel like I really shadowed this enough so now that I'm on a separate layer, I can really kind of get in there and play with the shadows and see if, uh, by doing that, if maybe it makes it look a little bit more gruesome or dimensional and, and cool, you know. Um, so yeah, at any rate, hopefully this video uh, helped you out and uh, answered some questions. Uh, please feel free to comment and let me know what you like and what you don't so I can, uh, I can get better at this stuff for you. I do plan on bringing you uh, one video a week. That's my goal, and I can't always, you know, say I, I promise that, but I'll, I'll do my best to stick with that regiment. That way it gives you something to look forward to if you come back to the channel. So please subscribe, please share, and please let me know what you think so I can keep bettering these videos and bring you more and more art. And be sure to check out uh, Blackstone Eternal. You can find it on Indie Planet. That's my comic book, uh, creator-owned and uh, operated, so to speak. So uh, check it out, let me know what you think, and uh, keep watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.